Hello, 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 everybody! It is I, the Mask Ranger, and welcome back to more empathy with Chapter 18, Breaking and Entering. Now, if you see the last chapter, you'll probably know what's going to happen in this one. But uh, if you haven't, I'll catch you up to speed. Okay? Baymax is currently following a lone microbot to parts unknown, and Hero, Riley, and Tip have to chase him down in order to bring him back, because, uh, for some reason people can't see him yet. I'm not sure, but wherever he's following the microbot to, it's got to be pretty interesting. So, let's dig in. <coughs> Reaching the bottom of the stairs at record speeds, Hero, Riley, and Tip rushed through the cafe, dodging around customers as they went. Just as they reached the front door, however, Cass happened to step in front of them, blinking sturdily as the two trio skidded to a halt before her. Hero? Cass questioned in surprise as she looked down at her nephew. Oh, not now! Disgust grumbled. Hey, Aunt Cass. Hero greeted with a nervous smile while Tip and Riley glanced past the woman. Wow, you're up and... Cass looked at Riley and Tip beaming at them as they gave her awkward smiles of their own. And you're with your friends! Yeah, they, uh, they really kicked my butt in the gear. Hero replied with a nervous chuckle. Yes, you could say that. Are you going to register for school? Cass questioned hopefully, oblivious to the fact that the three children kept glancing around her. Uh, yeah. Hero replied distractedly as he watched Baymax turn a corner a block away, prompting him and the girls to begin maneuvering around Cass. I thought about what she said. Really inspired me. One, we never actually got to see what Cass said to Hero, so, uh, I don't know what he's talking about, and, unless you see the movie, and two, liar, liar, pants on fire. Oh, honey, that's so great! Cass cooed as she pulled Hero into a hug. Riley paused to watch, feeling the warmth coming off Cass as Hero awkwardly returned the hug, and Tip inched her way out the door. Okay, I know we're in a rush and all, but seeing this is so awesome! Joy commented. Okay, you go have fun with your friends, Cass said as she stepped away from Hero and nodded towards Tip and Riley. And tonight, we'll have a special dinner. I'll, uh, I'll whip up some chicken wings. You know, with the hot sauce that makes your face go numb. Okay, sounds good, Hero agreed as he stepped out the door with Tip. Riley moved to follow them, but was stopped as Cass suddenly grabbed her arm and pulled her into a hug. Thank you, Cass whispered the warmth of her joy causing the surprise Riley to smile and return the hug. It... It was really no problem. Riley replied with an embarrassed shrug as the two stepped away from each other, the girl tucking a stray hair behind one of her ears. That doesn't mean I can't say thank you, Cass argued with a genuine smile as she gently cupped Riley's face with one hand. I expect to see you at dinner tonight, too. Of course, Riley agreed with a nod. I won't hold you all up any longer, Cass stated as she stepped away from Riley, looking over at Tip and Hero, standing anxiously by the door. You all have fun. Yep, bye, Hero replied as he ushered Riley out the door, before the three of them took off running in the direction they had last seen Baymax going in. Baymax! They called as they raced after the robot, dodging around pedestrians as they tried to close the distance with the android, who they were only able to catch glimpses of as he ducked around corners while dutifully following the microbot's directions. Eventually, they found themselves running through a, ba through a maze of back alleys as they followed Baymax to some dark, forgotten corner of the city. Oh, I don't like this, Fear whined. This looks like a bad part of town. Th no. This looks like a bad part of town. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Running down a final alley, the trio found themselves in an area dominated by abandoned warehouses. 
Huffing and puffing, they looked around for any sign of Baymax, eventually spotting the robot standing in front of the doors leading into one of the warehouses. Finally! Disgust exclaimed. Baymax! Tip called as the free jogged over to the robot, prompting him to return towards them as they approached. Are you crazy? Hero demanded as they came to a stop in front of Baymax. What are you doing? Uh, you know, he was just following the microbot like YOU TOLD IT TO! I found where your tiny robot wants to go, Baymax explained, holding up the petri dish as proof. I told you it's broken, Hero huffed, catching his breath, taking the petri from Baymax and looking at it as he spoke. It's not trying to go... Hero trailed off as he began moving the petri dish back and forth, looking at the trapped microbot in confusion. What is it? Riley questioned as she and Tip looked at the microbot as well. He's right, Hero replied as he stepped towards the door. The microbot, it's trying to get into the warehouse. Or it's just had a bit of an identity crisis and is currently debating the meaning of life and transformed into a convenient compass for you. A compass that is also conveniently pointing in the direction of said warehouse. Why would it want to do that? Tip questioned. I don't know, Hero replied as he examined the padlock holding the door closed. But I think we need to find out. That's our hero. His brain is finally in top gear. You want to go in there? Riley questioned as she looked the warehouse over. You sure this is a good idea? No, Hero admitted with a sigh. But something's going on here. Something affecting my tech. I need to figure out what. Well, I don't see how we're getting in with that big old lock on the door. Tip commented as she nodded towards the padlock. There is a window, Baymax announced as he looked up. Following his gaze, the trio spotted an open window ten or so feet above a shipping container sitting nearby. How are we supposed to reach that? Riley questioned. Biting his lip thoughtfully, Hero glanced over at Baymax before doing a double take and looking the robot up and down. I've got an idea, he announced. After clambering on top of the shipping container, the trio had Baymax stand with his back to the wall before Hero began clambering up the robot, his feet distorting the android's inflated face comically. Great idea! This is a terrible idea, Tip commented, her expression dubious as Riley stood beside her, worrying her bottom lip. Nah, this is easy, Hero replied with a grunt of effort as he positioned himself on top of Bayma Baymax's head and reached for the windowsill. No sweat. Please exercise caution, Baymax pleaded monotonically. Monotonically. A fall from this height could lead to bodily harm. Gripping the windowsill, Hero pulled himself up enough to allow him to look through the window. The area beyond was large and open, typical for any warehouse. None of the electric lights were on, casting the whole building in a dark gloom. The window was situated on the second floor of the warehouse, made up of a network of catwalks that hung suspended over the first floor. Do you see anything? Riley questioned. Not yet, Hero replied with a shake of his head, before grunting as he pulled himself in through the window. Standing up, Hero squinted his eyes as he scanned the dimly lit interior before reaching into his pocket and pulling out the petri dish. Looking at the microbot held within, he noted that it was trying to move towards an area within the bowels of the shared shadowy White House warehouse. Why did I say White House? I said the last name of Amy Whitehouse. Dang. <laughs> Hearing a sound from behind him, Hero turned around to find Riley climbing through the window before she turned and helped Tip through as well. All right, Tip said in a low whisper as she brushed her hands off. Now what? Tip was interrupted by a loud squeaking sound from behind them. Spinning around, the trio found Baymax sticking halfway through the window, his inflated bulk stopping him from coming all the way through. Oh no, Baymax 
Baymax stated with a note of impassive distress, his voice echoing off the metal walls of the warehouse. Hearing this, the trio quickly shushed him, prompting Baymax to shush him back at a lower volume and apparent understanding. Excuse me while I let out some air, Baymax stated before a loud hissing sound began to emanate from Baymax as his bulk began to reduce. <laughs> the trio froze as the sound carried through the whole building. Their eyes wide as Baymax shrunk to half of his width. Sorry, a couple of people following me. Or not. Just walking behind me. Well, now that the whole block knows we're here, Disgust, com Disgust commented. Are you done? Hero questioned after the hissing stopped. Oh, Hero finished Disgust's sentence. Interesting. Yes. Baymax replied obliviously. Stepping forward, Tip and Riley each grabbed one of Baymax's arms before they dragged him the rest of the way through the window. It will take me a moment to reinflate, Baymax explained from his position on the floor. Fine, Hero replied as he began making his way towards the set of stairs that, just, that led down to the first floor. Just keep it down. Making their way to the first floor, the girls followed Hero as he used the microbot to navigate them deeper into the warehouse. Turning a corner, Hero suddenly stopped dead in his tracks, causing the girls to bump into him. What are you- Tip began to say but stopped as Hero spun to face her, holding his finger up to his lips, his eyes wide. After Tip fell quiet, Hero indicated to something around the corner. Shooting nervous glances at one another, Riley and Tip crept up to the corner and peeked around it. Down the hall, a semi-transparent plastic tarp had been set up on a metal frame, through which shadowy figures could be seen moving. What should we do? Tip whispered as she, as she and Riley ducked back behind the corner. Is the microbot leading you over there? Riley asked Hero. Hero checked the petri dish before nodding in confirmation. Well then, Riley said with a nod as she squared her shoulders. I guess we better go check it out. No, no, I disagree with this course of action! Fear squeaked. With that, Riley turned and began cautiously walking around the corner and towards the tarp. As she walked away from them, Tip and Hero shared a glance before the boy shrugged and motioned for the girl to go ahead of him. Tip rolled her eyes in response before following after Riley, while Hero brought up the rear. Well, what choice do they have, really? I guess they're now becoming investigators, which is a good thing. And given the fact that the warehouse is currently dark, I hope it goes well. As they approached the tarp, the trio saw that there were other frames set up in a square around what seemed to be a collection of automatic machinery, all buzzing with activity as he performed the design functions. His brow furrowing, Hero walked past the tarps, discovering that the machinery was set up as an assembly line, the end of which was a conveyor belt that deposited freshly manufactured microbots into a plastic trash barrel. Dun dun dun! My microbots? Hero questioned in confusion as he dipped his hands into the bucket and scooped a few dozen out. What the hell is this? Look! Riley whispered in shock as she pointed past Hero. Lifting his head, Hero's eyes widened in surprise as he saw that line up before, lined up before them were more of the trash barrels. Dozens upon dozens of them, each filled to the brim with microbots. Double dun dun dun! Somebody's making more of them, Hero whispered after taking a moment to refine his voice. Uh, guys? Tip said nervously, catching Hero and Riley's attention. I think you should take a look at this. Following Tip's gaze, 
Hero and Riley saw that the wall nearby was dominated by a map of the city, on which various notes had been written, and pieces of paper had been pinned to the wall, been pinned to, with lines of red string interconnecting them. On my left, there is a new building, and ahead of me is a new path site, a new footpath. Does it lead to a construction site? Right. Well, pedestrians this way. Okay. What the hell is that? Riley questioned. Nothing good. Hero replied with a shake of his head as he began approaching the map. It's a conspiracy! Hello, Baymax suddenly said as he walked up behind the trio, causing them all to jump and let out small cries of surprise. All eclipsed by the sound of fear shrieking inside Riley's head. Baymax! Hero said breathlessly as he clutched his chest. You gave me a heart attack! My hands are equipped with defibrillators. Baymax stated as he rubbed his hands together before holding them up towards Hero, an audible electric buzz filling the air as the palms of his hands glowed blue. Clear. Stop! 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 Hero said quickly, holding his hands up as emphasis while backing away from Baymax. It's just an expression! Alright, still walking along. Don't worry about me guys, I'm fine. Just focus on the... There's a... Police car. Right at the end of the path. I wasn't planning on this recording to get too adventurous. And I must confess, I had to... Uh, had to, I had to split this up before I got to the road so I didn't run into any cars. Don't worry, the video will all come together. I'll just merge them, to merge them together. All right, let's continue. And hopefully I won't run into any more construction stuff. Uh, guys? Anger suddenly spoke up. His voice hesitated. I don't want to alarm anyone, but I think I'm getting something here. What do you mean? You're getting something? Disgust questioned. Look, I'm still trying to figure out how these empathy readings work, Anger grumbled in reply. All I know is I'm picking up some serious anger, and it's not coming from our two buddies over there. So what you're saying is... Sadness began to say, pausing to gulp nervously. There's someone else here. Riley finished the thought out loud. Jinx! What was that? Tip questioned as she and Hero turned towards Riley. Guys, I can feel... Riley paused. Her eyes widening as the sensation abruptly became stronger. There's somebody else here! As Riley spoke, the petri dish began to vibrate in Hero's hands. Looking down at the trapped microbot, Hero saw that it was desperately trying to move in the direction opposite of the way he was facing. Suddenly, the sound of millions of shifting microbots filled the air as they all began ominously rising out of their barrels. Their movements, me their movements mechanical and precise, like Lego blocks rapidly assembling themselves before their eyes. Tip and Riley's faces went pale as they tracked the movement while Hero spun around and began slowly backing away. We should be running! Fear screamed. Oh no. Baymax stated a moment before the microbots rushed towards them like a massive swarm of insects. Letting out screams of panic, Hero, Riley, and Tip quickly spun around and began running away from the microbot swarm as fast as their legs could carry them. As they ran, Hero happened to glance behind him before he turned around and skidded to a halt, prompting the girls to do the same. Oh, come on! Hero called out, exasperation mixing with terror. Behind them, Baymax was following along at his normal walking pace, the microbot swarm drawing dangerously close to him. I am not fast, Baymax said simply. Yeah, no kidding! Riley shouted as she rushed back, grabbed Baymax by the hand and began running away from the swarm. 
Tip and Hero following behind. Go! Go! Come on! Hero shouted, urging the others on until they reached a door leading outside and threw a shoulder against it. The metal clanged but did not budge, causing Hero to bounce off of it and stumble back half a step. Quickly catching himself, Hero threw a kick at it, which also proved to be ineffectual. Her eyes wide with fear, Tip turned her attention towards a much larger Baymax. Kick it down! Tip shouted up at Baymax while gesturing towards the door. Baymax glanced at Tip before looking down at his feet and throwing a short kick at the door, his numbed foot bouncing off the sealed door with a squeak. Ah! Hero groaned as he and the girls turned to look behind them, watching in horror as a swarm of microbots surged towards them. Letting out a squeak of fear, Riley quickly spun Baymax around and shoved him away from the door. The others following as the microbot swarm slammed against the door a moment later. Doing her best to keep up with Tip and Hero as they led the way, Riley blindly pushed Baymax forward as she ran. Running towards a neglected corner of the warehouse that was little more than a twisted nest of old, rusted pipes, Hero and Tip hopped over a large pipe that ran across the ground. Riley, however, did not see the pipe, causing Baymax to trip over it and fall flat on his face, his tiny legs kicking the air hopelessly while Riley rolled over his back and landed on her rear in front of him. Riley! Hero shouted in fear as he skidded to a halt and doubled back, Tip following behind him. Reaching Riley, Hero quickly grabbed her by her arms and hoisted her back onto her feet, while Tip grabbed hold of one of Baymax's hands and physically pulled him over the pipe, allowing the robot to get his feet back under him. Go, go, go! Hero shouted as the four of them continued running, Tip practically dragging Baymax behind her causing the robot to hit his head on one of the low-hanging pipes. Turning a corner, the group found a piece of large, abandoned machinery sitting before them. A hatch allowing access into the machine through a narrow passageway that led directly to the other side. Through there! Hero shouted as he pointed at the hatch. It's too narrow! Tip shouted in despair as the fourth then came to a halt in front of the hatch. Baymax will never fit! He'll fit, he's practically half balloon! Hero replied before grabbing Baymax and positioning the robot in front of him. Come on! Shoving Baymax in the back, Hero forced the robot into the hatch, his inflated body bunching up while his vinyl skin squeaked loudly against the metal walls as the boy forced him forward, the girls following closely behind them. Reaching the other side, Hero quickly spun around and slammed the hatch shut before he and the girls moved to seal it with a bar built into the hatch. Before they could, though, the microbot swarm slammed against the hatch from the other side, bursting it open and sending the group flying. The three children landing and rolling across the cement floor, while Baymax crashed into an open shaft in the floor. After quickly picking himself off the floor and helping the girls to their feet, Hero moved to assist Baymax, the robot's feet again kicking the air helplessly. Before he noticed that the shaft the android was stuck in led to an air duct running underneath the floor. Glancing back, Hero's eyes widened in horror as he saw the microbot swarming out of the machine towards them. Move! Hero shouted as, she, as he shoved Baymax down the shaft before jumping in after him, the girls following behind him. The four of them quickly crawled through the vents shafts, abruptly changing direction multiple times as the microbots began seeping into the vents. After a few terrifying seconds of scrambling through the vents, the sound of the crawling microbots echoing all around them, Hero pushed open the panel above them and the freed children clambered out before pulling Baymax out as well. As they ran across the top of the vent, the microbots became swarming after them, slamming panels up until it got directly below the group and surged upwards sending the four of them flying into the air. After a horrifying moment of freefall, the group fell onto one of the catwalks. Groaning in pain, Hero picked himself up and looked around for any sign of the microbots. As he did, Hero saw someone standing at one of the far ends of the catwalk. Hero couldn't make out much of the person as he stood in the shadows, and appeared to be dressed mainly in a long black coat with matching boots and gloves. But from based on the person's frame and height, 
Hero guessed the person was a man. The most noticeable feature of the person was the white mask that concealed their features. The rest of their head hidden under a black hood. The mask resembled those worn by kabuki performers, with red lines painted across the bridge of his nose and its brow, while it seemed to stare at Hiro with pupilless yellow eyes. As Hiro watched, the masked man began to approach them, raising his hands as he went, which caused the microbots to swarm up onto the catwalk behind him. Turning away from the, ma from the masked man, Hero spotted an open cat open window at the opposite end of the catwalk. Lola! Sorry. Lola! Up! Hero shouted as he pulled Baymax to his feet. The window! Get to the window! Seeing the masked man as well, Riley and Tip quickly pulled themselves to their feet before running away from him, following Hero as he pushed Baymax in front of him. Reaching the open window, Hero attempted to shove Baymax through it, only for the bulky robot to get stuck. Hero bouncing off the ro android's rear end and stumbling back half a step. He's coming! Riley said, her voice filled with terror as she and Tip ran up next to Hero. Come on, push it through! Tip shouted before she began pushing on Baymax's backside, prompting the others to do the same. Suck it in! Hero shouted at Baymax as the three of them pushed on him with all their might. Suddenly, Baymax's weight shifted and the window spun on its hinges, resulting in Baymax's top half to face into the warehouse while his rear end hung out the window, the three children clinging desperately to him as they dangled above the ground a story below them. There's a bike behind me. Whoa! Riley exclaimed as she wrapped her arms around one of Tip's legs. Sorry, sorry. sorry. Too high! Fierce screech. Too high! Oh my god! Tip screamed, her legs kicking as she desperately tried to cling to Baymax's back. Oh my god! Baymax! Hero called. Hero called, his voice full of fear. Hero? Baymax questioned before crossing his arms in front of his face as the microbot surged forward and slammed into him, knocking the robot out of the window and sending all four of them flying through the air. The force of the blow knocked them out in such a way that Baymax fell in front of the three children. As they fell, Baymax managed to wrap his arms around all three of them and pull them protectively to his chest while turning his back towards the ground. Landing on, top, landing on the top of the small tin roof building that sat directly below the window, Baymax bounced off it, flipped through the air again, and landed flat on his back on the ground, the children bouncing off his stomach as he landed and rolling onto the ground a few feet away. Everybody okay? Riley questioned as she quickly got back to her feet before helping Tip up as well. Yeah, Hero called back as he pulled Baymax upright. Come on, we've got to get out of here! Nodding in reply, Riley and Tip followed behind Hero as he dragged Baymax along. I think... Fear stated with a wobbly voice. I think I'm going to go lay down. Who the heck was that guy? Anger demanded as Riley and the others ran. Feeling a nervous surge of anger, Riley glanced over her shoulder and spotted the masked man glaring down at them from the window they had jumped out of. I don't know, Joy stated, sounding oddly subdued. But I don't think we've seen the last of him. Phew. Another fun chapter to write. Hope you guys enjoyed it as well. Yes, we did, and I certainly did, Finn Monster. Excellent work. Alright, guys. That's this chapter done with. Now let's go to the next part. Which will come soon. Until then, I'm the Mask Ranger. And take care. Have a good night, and keep moving forward.